This has been fantastic so far. And now I'd like to introduce our very own Carrie Barrett, who's going to be talking with Mrs. New Jersey, uh, Christina H Henderson. So can I just say a word about Carrie? You can, yeah. So Carrie is an <laughs> Emmy award-winning TV anchor who now has her own consulting business, Carrie Barrett Consulting, which Richard and I are using to try to improve our performance and <laughs> <laughs> to profit. So you, you can be the judge, audience. We asked her to interview <laughs> Christina. We just started because working because together. <laughs> so, so welcome. <laughs> I thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And I am kidding. You guys are amazing. We all, Everybody always, the chemistry between the two of you is Phenomenal. You have something special going on here. With that said, we also have a really special group of guests that are here as well. Thank you for the kind introduction. I've been looking forward to talking to Christina Henderson ever since you guys invited me to be on the show. So we have Mrs. New Jersey America. Christina, it's, it's so nice to meet you and see you. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much for interviewing me. I, I really appreciate it. So are you, you're, you're the current Mrs. New Jersey, correct? I am. I am. This has been a wild year. I've been so busy and it's just been such an incredible opportunity. It's Is really, there, awesome. have you always been, I guess you have been right. Always sort of on that, in that pageant circle or how does that work? <laughs> so I used to watch Miss USA on TV. Mm -hmm. And when I was 19, I was like, Oh, let me just compete for Miss New Jersey. And just I just win. went in literally, and I didn't, train it all. I just went for it and I got the best interview award, but, I, but all these other girls had really trained hard for it. And I got that pageant bug. You know, I really enjoyed meeting these other women who are really out in the community, making a difference. And I learned that it, it's not just, a, it's not about, it, this is a modern day pageant. It's not just about strutting your stuff on a stage. It's about giving back to the community. And I always love working with nonprofits. So it kind of aligned with I values my goals. So, and just m making friendships with like-minded women was pretty incredible. So then I gave it another go for Miss Massachusetts when I was 24 and I competed for that. And I, um, I was a finalist and I got Miss Congeniality, most photogenic. And I had thought that was my last pageant. And then I found the married pageant, Mrs. <laughs> and I'm already, again, so involved in nonprofits that I said, why not? Let me just go for it. And now I'm, I'm so grateful to have the title and be able to really be a, a bigger voice for nonprofits. You know, when, when I'm in a crown and sash, people want to talk to me more and it just helps amplify the message of the nonprofits that I work with. And also I work with um, women in business too. I'm building a support system for women owners. And I think it's so important that women support women in 2021. So, and moving forward. So I, I just, it's just been such an incredible experience. Have you had to change the way, I mean, I know that when you are on the pad, you know, I, I don't know if even the pageant circuit is the right word. And I'm, I apologize if I'm not using the correct terminology, but you travel a lot. How has that changed with everything that's going on in terms of the pandemic? So right now I'm kind of staying in New Jersey and doing most of my traveling actually <laughs> with my business. I'm actually don't on a campaign donating masks and we're doing it to, to close by States. We're going to New York, Philadelphia. We are going to be traveling to Florida and California when it's a little bit safer to do so. And we're donating over a hundred thousand masks, which I'll get into in a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, as Mrs. New Jersey, I'm touring the state and you know what, I'm, I'm still going out there, even though it is a pandemic, of course, I'm wearing my mask and having that extra safety protection. But it's important that, um, you know, at having this title, I think it's important that we all remain hopeful and, you know, meeting with other people during this time, I think is really important. You know, human beings, we're social beings, and it's still important that we live our lives to the fullest. And I want to make the most of this year and I'm doing it the safest way possible. And I think that's important, but we just can't stop living our lives. You know, we have to still live and, and seize every opportunity. And so I'm making the most of it and, and working with nonprofits, you know, just because it's a pandemic, these organizations aren't stopping. They're not, they're not on a break or on a pause. It's important that we still get out there and support our nonprofits and support our small businesses during this time. Cause it's so critical. It's so okay. crucial. Well, of, of course, and not, especially with the nonprofits, yeah. not only are, you know, for many of them, their donations are down, but the need is so great. I have yeah. a friend who runs a nonprofit here in, in, uh, in Rockaway, New Jersey, actually, and it's a really tough time. And I know she's not the only one that's struggling. And I want to ask you a little bit about that, but you talked earlier about the importance of being supportive and the way that you help, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
uh, small business owners and especially women-owned business. You're a certified woman-owned business. And I want to talk to you about business in a moment, but I was looking at your Instagram page. And if you're not following Christina, you should be. It's very, very cool. One of the initiatives (laughs) that you have right now is that you're going to all 21 counties in the state of New Jersey, and you're visiting with women who own their businesses, who run businesses. How did you get that going? And what's, what's sort of the ultimate goal? What would you like to see happen with that? Well, I kind of thought of the idea because I had searched like a grassroots or like a support system for women owners. And I couldn't really find some, any actually I'm WBE certified and that's a network of women, but that's a small percentage of women who are WBE certified. And so it kind of made sense to me to meet with other women owners. And, you know, as a woman, woman owned business, as, as an owner, I find it hard to meet other women who are like-minded in business, who have, um, you know, a thirst for success and for, for giving back and just ha- it's hard to find people with that same mindset and I, and build a friendship too. And so I really wanted to make that a part of it as well. So then I, I, I also, with this difficult time, I wanted to meet with these women owners and discuss how they pivoted their business and how they kept their businesses alive and successful during this difficult time, you know, for small businesses. So I I was so excited to start my tour to the 21 counties in New Jersey. And I'm a Jersey girl raised in New Jersey, but I haven't seen some of these um, counties and these towns ever before. I haven't even heard of some of them. So it was, it was um, a great experience to start and it's just been incredible. And I'm still continuing my tour. I'll be in Bergen County tomorrow. And I've just had the most incredible experience. I seeing the hope on people's faces and people have been so welcoming and so warm to me. Uh, I went to the town of uh, Frenchtown, New Jersey, which I've never been to before. And if you haven't been, I highly recommend it. It's this very charming town. And I was there in December and it was all decorated for Christmas. It was like a Hallmark movie town. It was awesome. And the mayor was there and the policemen were there to welcome me. And there 90% of the businesses in Frenchtown are women owned. And they were so excited to see me and talk to me. And it was a really, really beautiful moment. Um, it was Christmas time. So I really felt the magic of Christmas during the pandemic. And I, one of the women owners told me a story about how her, her neighbor's business was suffering and another business came in and helped pay their bills. And then I visited a bakery in that town and they told me, don't leave without trying the bakery down the street and their competitor business. Yeah. And that is just what it's all about. And it has been so incredible and really moving. And I'll remember this for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 you know, I just really tell people to really support your small businesses during this time. When you grab a coffee, don't run to Starbucks. Think about supporting your small businesses yeah. because they're hurting right now during this pandemic. And that's, that's really why I'm doing that. I love that you talked about how, you know, it sort of goes back to a little bit of what Ash was saying, but not coming from that scarcity mindset and instead coming from a mindset of where there is enough for everybody. It may look a little bit different than it did, you know, 10 months ago or approaching 12 now, but Mm -hmm. that is truly where so much of that belief in giving back and, and actually living it, not just saying you want to do it. And I want to talk to you about your business and how you, how you give back. You mentioned that you were on um, a sort of a coast to coast tour for delivering PPE and masks. Your business mm-hmm. is called Henderson promos and you're a promotional mm-hmm. company, right? We can see some mm-hmm. of the swag that you have behind you, but mm-hmm. tell us a little bit mm-hmm. about what you do and why giving back in within your industry and within your business is so important and how you go about it. Sure. So Henderson promos are a promotional products company. Like you said, we do swag. We put logos on anything like t-shirts, hats, bags, you name it. We offer over 700,000 branded items. Um, so when the pandemic hit, all of a sudden we were operating at 10 to 20% of what we normally operate at. So we had gone from our most successful year ever in promos to now 10 to 20%. And you got to think about that for a second. We have employees, we have to pay, we have bills, we have to pay. So that was a very scary time. All of a sudden we were worried and we had to really think fast. And we were actually doing promos for hospitals at the time, and they were coming to us for PPE items. So we were able in the beginning of the pandemic to use our manufacturers overseas that were making our pop sockets and fidget spinners. They were now making PPE items, gowns, masks, gloves, these items that we were able to supply to hospital states and our frontline workers. But 
I was on the phone with cargo ships and private planes, highly stressed out, dealing with large numbers. It was very risky for our business. And it was too much stress, you know, shipping yeah. delays, but we were able to get the items to the people who need the most. But what we decided was we need to keep it in the USA. We need to find a way that we can provide this and not rely overseas. So we partnered with a, a company in California. So now we're making three ply masks and we're able an N95 mask pending NIOSH approval. And we are supplying the states, hospitals, frontline workers, Fortune 500 companies with the PPE, the three ply masks that have that extra protection. And we're also doing the gowns and gloves and things like that as well. But these are such critical items and we should really not be looking overseas when we can make it here in the USA and we're able to employ people in the USA. And I think that's so important during this time. There's so many Americans out of jobs and I don't understand why we keep going overseas when all these items can be made here in the USA and they are being made. And actually uh, there's, there's companies that are making these items and I know businesses and hospitals and states that are still using overseas, which, um, you know, is, is an issue. We really have to support our, our USA companies and, and have it made here. You know, is there, is there something in your story or your journey or your life? What made you so, um, focused on, on sort of this nonprofit sector and the idea of giving at, uh, giving back rather, was it something that was instilled Mm -hmm. in you from, from a young age, something you saw your parents doing? Um, thank you for asking. You know, I think life, um, as I've, as I've grown up, uh, I've realized that life is about service and giving back. What's the point of living if you're not helping other people? And so um, one of the organizations I work closely with is called the Tigger House Foundation, raising awareness for opioid addiction. I lost my brother-in-law from an opioid overdose, and it's a huge uh, epidemic facing the world. And I think it's so important that we raise awareness, change the stigma surrounding this disease, make it okay to talk about because people still don't like to talk about it. They like to mm-hmm. hide it. And we have to really address the situation and educate our youth. So I'm very passionate about that. I'm also passionate about um, helping the food banks. I work closely with Fulfill, the food bank of Monmouth and Ocean Counties, but I'm also donating masks to many other food banks uh, nationwide. But I think people don't realize that since the pandemic, the the need for food has increased 40 to 60% in our nation. And if you think about that for a second, that's that's just unacceptable. And we really need to do something about that. And I think it's really important that we really look at our food banks and help as much as possible. I was standing on the street handing out masks to the food bank of Harlem, and it broke my heart to see people, you know, waiting online from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. It was freezing cold, and they were waiting in line for a a few things of food that they could eat for the week. And I don't even know if that would be enough for them. I saw little kids waiting online. I saw people with dirty masks waiting online. That's another reason why we're giving out clean, safe masks for them. Um, And I saw someone with little dogs, the dogs were shivering and it just really broke my heart. And we really need to help our community during this time. There's so many people that are struggling. Someone you might think might not be struggling could be, you know, I'm at these food banks and, you know, they're like, don't judge because there could be a, BMW pulling up and that person could have just lost their job. So you really just don't know who's struggling and you really have to be, um, you know, aware and I just try and help your neighbors. And that's what I'm trying to do. You know, uh, it's, it's a difficult time for a lot of people. And with my title and with my business, I, you know, it's just all about giving back. Absolutely. Richard or Elizabeth, do you have a, have a quick question? Well, I have kind of a comment, but a question too. So Carrie, you said something in there that really hit home for everything we've been talking about this show. When you mentioned that this has been almost a year now that we've been in quarantine and COVID and we all thought it was going to be over by July, right? I mean, we hoped it would be. And so at what point, and maybe Christina can answer this, do you realize, well, this ain't going away. And so I got to do something different here. I got to pivot. Like, where, where does that realization come in for people? And should it come in sooner in our everyday lives? So like, if something's not working the way that you need it to work in your everyday life from now on, are you just going to let it think, oh, this is temporary? Or are you going to say, well, this could be like COVID and I need to change now? <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend people having a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. 
in place for, for their future. This is the new normal. Don't think it's going away anytime soon. And you have to really change your business model for the pandemic and do things outside the box, take risks. Now's the time to take risks. Now's the time to rebrand your business um, and really put yourself out there. Focus on your website, focus on your social media, building up your presence. And you might have to switch career paths and that's okay. Um, that happens and you have to find a way to adapt to this new world because I think it's not going away anytime soon uh, just from the need for PPE uh, out there. So I think that we really need to adapt and that's really important. And it's okay and be hopeful and embrace it and don't be afraid of it. So uh, Christina, uh, the lawyer brain is, <laughs> of mine is working. I'm wondering how you sure. got into the contest in Massachusetts if you were from New Jersey. But. Sure. So I lived in Massachusetts for a little while. I attended Boston University. I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in journalism. So I did journalism for a little bit. And, um, but unfortunately I took out a lot of student loans for BU and <laughs> journalism wasn't paying the bills, unfortunately. Oh. So I, um, my, my husband is an attorney uh, like yourself and he started our business. It was Thrive Promos in the beginning. And he started by printing t-shirts and a screen printing machine in our kitchen and selling them to his friends. And they liked them. And then they told their friends and it was just kind of word of mouth. And then I said, you know, I want to really come into this business and I feel like I could really transform it. I have experience in sales and I, I think I, I want to switch my path to business. And so the, I decided to leave my career in journalism and in my first year at Thrive Promos, I rebranded to Henderson Promos to keep it in the family name. And I tripled the company sales in the first year. And it just has been growing tremendously ever since. And it was the best decision I've ever made. So that's really what happened in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're clearly uh, a natural. So uh, obviously Thank you. Uh, you made a, a good career choice there. But the Thank other you. question, the more serious question that I wanted to ask was when, when you talk with women who have pivoted their business, can you give us some examples of some of the types of pivots that they've made so our audience can sure. also perhaps consider some of the options that other people chose? Sure. So um, when I visit some restaurants, um, a couple of the restaurants I visited are more focused on takeout, partnering with Uber Eats, partnering with these other um, uh business companies that allow for delivery services. And I think that's really important for restaurants. Um, I, I went to a bakery and they said that they're doing a lot of online sales that they've never done before and um, different promotions they're doing on social media. And then, you know what, to be quite honest, I also visited a couple of businesses that um, kind of get, have given up and they really are not willing to change and not willing to adapt because they're so used to their old business model. And it really breaks my heart to see that. Um, but that's, that's the reality of the situation. You, you, you can't be afraid to change your business model, do things online, sell online, be able for, for boutiques to have all your clothes available online to sell. And I know it's going to be difficult in the beginning and navigating that, but that might be the only way that you're going to succeed and stay afloat during this time. So you just gotta just dive in and um, and stay hopeful again and and stay positive. Great. Well, thank you. It sounds like <laughs> online is 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 definitely uh, a key feature. Mm -hmm. And I think you had a question you were itching to ask. Yes, just super quick. So, Christina, you seem so like well grounded and and very thank self aware, you. right? Thank and you. sometimes there can be that misconception that pageantry or the, the whole beauty business is can have some superficial attributes to it. Mm -hmm. I just kind of want to go back to Ash's comments earlier about the inner work. What is some mm -hmm. advice and tips that you would give for people um, that you've kind of done to stay grounded and have done the inner work to kind of get where you are? Sure. So um, what it comes down to is really believing in yourself. You don't need a huge support system of people to believe in you. It's, it's, and Ash was talking a little bit about that. It's about, it's about really um, just striving, having this drive to succeed and not worry about the outside noise uh, with pageantry. Yeah. I, I, I meet people who, who think of it and have that old idea of pageantry. Right. And these women that I compete with are incredible women. They're entrepreneurs. They're, you know, they're businesswomen, they're doctors, they're nurses, 
my, one of my good friends now, Mrs. Massachusetts is building a church in Nigeria right now. So these are the kind of things that these women are doing. There is so much substance to them and they are incredible people who genuinely care about giving back to the community and you could just tell. And I think it's important that people see it in that kind of a light because that's what it really is now. And at least my experience with it and why I do pageantry. And I think, um, you know, also it's just, again, it's about just believing in yourself and, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing. And just going for it. I mean, whatever you want in life, if you take that risk, it's not going to happen if you don't go for it. Right. And you might fail a million times, but just keep at it. If that's your main goal, don't give up. And it might be really hard. And you might have a lot of people who may say things and they don't support you. And it could be your family, but you have to just focus on what you want, you know, in your heart, what feels right. And you have to stay positive and driven and know that it's going to come true. I believe in the law of attraction. If you can't tell. <laughs> I love that. Ash. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Thank you. You were amazing. I want to ask you, I'm going to ask you one little question. I may put, put you on the spot, but can you give any of us like a quick sneak peek? Like what does it look like behind the scenes at a, at a pageant or a competition? <laughs> like how we all envision it in our minds. Yeah. Uh, a lot of nerves are backstage yeah. and people uh, practicing for their interview. You know, the interview is the biggest part of the pageant and uh, you never know any questions, fair game. And then it's yeah. a three minute timed interview. So um, that's kind of what everyone's kind of like going over, but they really ask you things about yourself. They want to just get to know you. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit of nerves, but it's, it's all the girls meeting with one another. And again, building these friendships, you know, I'm really good friends with these women who are just doing amazing things. And it's just an incredible, uh, network to be surrounded by. So that's why I really love pageantry. And it's also about like, just putting yourself out there and being confident and, you know, win or lose, there's only one winner, but it's, it's, you feel so good when you just go for it. And, you know, you might be nervous, but you've tackled it and you did your best. And that's the most important thing. And it just builds that confidence, which is so important in business too, in all different areas of life. 100%. 100%. I, I yeah. will never forget an answer to a Miss America question. And she <laughs> ultimately won. It was the interview and she was from Hawaii. This was years ago. And they said, what's the first thing you're going to do after this pageant is over? And she said, I'm going to eat everything in the world twice. <laughs> and I'll never forget it. <laughs> I love that. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Christina. Thank you so much for interviewing me. It's been amazing to be surrounded by such movers and shakers out there. So this is this has been incredible. Awesome. Well, that's great. So uh, thank you, Carrie. So uh, for uh, the executive spotlight and interview, I, I thought it was really interesting. And Christina, you are such an amazing talent in so many ways. Thank you. It's thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on our and, show. And can I just thank add you. for the executive spotlight, we normally ask people to make a charitable donation, but that's kind of Christina's <laughs> whole life. So. <laughs> We didn't ask her this time. Well, well, you know. She's out everybody already. <laughs> free so. mass, free <laughs> so we have to take a commercial break, but we'll be back with more Passage to Profit right after this. <laughs> 